My name is Kelsey Kenroy and I am a business consultant for established mom founders. And today we're talking all about your favorite word, the word that you love using. And by love, I mean, you need to use it, but you probably don't. And so today we're talking all about the struggle with saying no. It's something that as female founders, as women entrepreneurs, as mothers, we know that we can't put any more on our plate yet we also don't want to miss out on anything. And so we keep saying yes and yes and yes until the inevitable crash and burn, until the inevitable sacrificing of ourselves, our relationships, and just not feeling great, right? So today we're gonna to talk about the struggle with saying no. We're gonna talk about why we struggle with saying no. And we're gonna talk about what we can do to change this, to change our minds and to get a better result and not have to sacrifice ourselves for opportunities. So recently I was working with a client and she came to me so stoked and so excited because she was given an opportunity to create a presentation for some very well-known CEOs. The problem with this was that this presentation date that they wanted was going to be right in the middle of a family vacation. And so she decided to take the date, to take the presentation in hopes that it would be a great opportunity for the visibility of her company to spread impact. And she did it. The problem was is that she felt very guilty about taking time away from her family during the process and stepping away to do this presentation felt not good to her. And that seems to be what we run into is that we continually come to this crossroads where we feel like we have to choose our family or our work. And that is the problem in itself is that we have the belief that it has to be one or the other. So she created this incredible presentation. She gave an incredible presentation. We talked about ways for her to leverage this conversation to stay top of mind and she killed it, of course. But in the back of her head was the reality that she had scheduled a family vacation to turn off and be present and she hadn't stuck to that. So like any situation, I love to let my clients walk through something and then reflect and talk about what was learned and how it felt and what we can do differently next time. And this wasn't any different. So I'm gonna to get to what happened and what the lesson was in this in just a minute. But I wanna talk about something that is the driver for the reason why we struggle so much with saying no. And this reason is rooted in fear, like most things that drive us against what we want to do. And so I'm sure you've heard the term FOMO, right? So F-O-M-O, -O, fear of missing out. And truthfully, a lot of businesses run on FOMO because with the idea of never missing out, that means you're saying yes to everything that you can with hopes that it will help you get where you want to go. And it sounds like it will work. And for many, it does, depending on how you define it working. So FOMO is one of the biggest contributing factors to business owners being overwhelmed. And so a lot of times what we see from the outside is that people are running million, billion dollar companies and they seem to have it all. They have the houses, the cars, the everything externally. But we don't see what's happening behind closed doors. We don't see the pressure that they're feeling. We don't see the, the beginning years of the grit and the hustle and what they gave up to get there. And it is this foundation that most people build on. Most people build on FOMO. They take any and every opportunity, say yes to as many things as possible in hopes that they will grow as fast as possible, not miss out on anything, and then one day they can rest. And then one day they can be the true CEOs of their company. And what I've discovered in my work and working with a lot of these million, multi-million dollar CEOs is that it doesn't work like that. Once you form the habit of building in a way where you take 
every opportunity that you can, you have instilled fear and you believe that that's what works for you. And so you just keep doing it. When you're ambitious and you truly care about making an impact in the world, it's easy to say yes to everything because a lot of us love our work. I could work way more than I do, but at what cost, right? And so we need to learn to start asking that question before we say yes to something. What will the cost of this be? Not just financially, but time-wise. Time is our only non-renewable asset, right? Is that gonna take time away from our family? Is that aligned with where we are in our personal values and what is of highest importance to us? That's up to you to decide. So FOMO is something that plays a huge role in the reason why we don't say no. FOMO also linked with people pleasing. People pleasing is also rooted in fear, right? So FOMO is a fear of missing out. People pleasing is rooted in the fear of making somebody upset, disappointing somebody. And as women, we are all people pleasers because we were rewarded for pleasing people, for helping people, for doing things right, for being quiet, for being small. All of these things that you know, are typically linked to our childhood and what we were taught, then are of course taken into our adulthood. And then we're running businesses and we just want to make everybody around us happy. We just want to do whatever everybody around us wants us to do because then nobody can be mad at us and everybody will like us. Here's the truth. There are lots of people that don't like you. There are lots of people that don't like me. And the second that you make peace with that, the second you finally get to go on with your life. Because if you continue to have conversations and say yes to things because you're afraid of making somebody upset, the only thing that you're doing is upsetting and disappointing yourself. And then likely also the people that are closest to you. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to make anybody mad. I understand that. But when we do this, what happens is we finally get to a place to where we are resentful. And then that resent boils into how we show up in our relationships. Eventually there's a tipping point. Eventually you reach a threshold. And that will manifest either physically or mentally or both in something. And so it just can't go ignored. So this fear of missing an opportunity, this fear of letting people down, it causes so many women and leaders to stop prioritizing their own needs, their own wants, and their own desires, which only ends up at a point where you start asking questions like, what am I even doing this for? Why am I doing this? It's interesting to watch how we feel so powerful creating our businesses. And then when we've created them to an established point to where we may have financial freedom, all of a sudden our power is gone. And instead, we're controlled by fear and by our calendars and by a bunch of other things that are outside of us. And when we say no, that is a choice that we make. That is a step in taking our power back as women and as leaders. Here's the thing. You're going to disappoint someone. You have to choose if that someone is you or someone else. And continuing to disappoint yourself, continuing to knock down the relationship with yourself, will not allow you to reach your full potential. Therefore, taking away from the exact people that you're wanting to lead and help. When fear is driving, we can't win. So how do we take fear out of the driver's seat and put ourselves back in? It's easy to just say, we'll start saying no to more things. I see this all the time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start saying no. It's, I'm going to do this this year. This is my new year's resolution. This is my quarter two, my quarter three, my quarter four goal. Uh, this is going to be a, a, a quarter where I just, you know, relax and lean back and, and just sustain the business. 
and then you get this itch and you're like, oh, but this is a really good opportunity. Maybe I'll just take this one, right? And then before you know it, you're just practicing the same behaviors and the same habits. So if we truly want to be empowered in our choices, empowered in our leadership, and be in a powerful stance, we first have to get clear on what we really want. When fear is leading, we make choices based upon what other people want for us, what we think other people want, or what we think we should be doing. When we are making the choices, that is a stance of power. It's easy to say no to something when you have a filtration system of that is not aligned with my goals, that is not aligned with my values, that is not the client for me, that is not the company for me. If you know these things and you're clear on what you want, no becomes easier. So for your story of success, what do you want the chapters to be? What do you want them to feel like? What do you want to write? Because once again, you can't lose sight that you are the one creating this story. You create it with your choices. So how do you want your days to look and feel? When you have a clear picture of what you want, you can create specific goals for yourself and for the company. And when you have specific goals, you can create a plan to get there. Second thing you need to do, you need to raise your standards. I want you to start viewing yourself, your capabilities, who you are, like the people who love you the most view you. And what would they accept for you? What would they say is acceptable for you? And that's what you need to stick to. You need to think about this for your business and yourself. Because if you're constantly just lowering yourself to meet anybody and everybody where they're at, it seems good in the moment. It seems like something maybe a heart-led leader would do, as you probably are. The issue with that is that comes at what cost, at what expense, and usually it is of yourself. So you have to raise your standards And think about what you will and won't allow for your life and your business, what is most aligned for your life and your business, and what isn't. And then to hold those sound the and then to hold those standards, you're going to need some very firm boundaries. You have to create boundaries to not filter people out as much as to protect yourself. This is the mindset shift you have to make. We look at saying no and boundaries as something that we know we need to to do and have, but when we think about actually doing it, we don't because of fear. But if you don't set these boundaries to protect yourself and your business, then you keep letting yourself and the people around you down. You're not following through with your word. If someone came to you and said, you're a liar, how would that feel? And so are you lying to yourself? Are you making promises or are you breaking? Are you, are you making promises that you're not keeping? Are you breaking your own promises to yourself? This is what we really have to think about as leaders. You're established to a point where you have great success financially and you can continue that success and you can make millions and millions of more dollars, but are you going to be present to enjoy it? Understanding what you want and no longer being willing to settle for anything less only works when you have clear rules in place that protect your time, your energy, and your values. That is what boundaries are for. When you know who you are, when you know what you want, when you know how you're getting there, wherever you wanna go, you can move in an aligned way. You can move in a way that feels better, that honors your family, that honors you, that honors what is most important to you. 
when you know what is up to par for your journey and how to block out anything that isn't, you start moving with intention. We struggle with saying no because we don't want to let anyone down and we have to shift into, I will no longer let myself down. And here's the truth. It should always be both. Remember the crossroads that I talked about where it's either business or family and you're standing at that crossroads and your heart is telling you family but then you think about, well, pro to provide for my family, to, to give them the, the financial stability that I need the business. And there's so much overlap here. And which one? What if we run them parallel to each other? What if this is not a crossroads? What if it's not two separate directions? So if you picture that in your mind where they're running parallel, what does that look like? They're separate, but they help each other. It should always be both. It should be great financial freedom and time freedom. The lesson that was discovered for my client was this. Regardless of someone's status or title, you are still allowed to ask for or speak up about what you want. In her specific scenario, an easy option for you and for her would be when somebody offers you an opportunity and you look at it and there's something that is misaligned, ask for that change. In this case, the date was misaligned. But because she was so excited about the bigness of this opportunity, it was just like, yes, absolutely. Drop anything and everything. Yes. And that's what we do. And then we feel guilty and then we feel resentful. So instead, what if we say, is there another date available? Is there another time available? Could it be this or could it be that? Worst case scenario, the answer from them is no. And then you get to sit down and say, what is the cost if I take this? But the struggle with saying no is the struggle that keeps us stuck. It keeps us running businesses that are successful from the exterior while we're crumbling inside. And it doesn't have to be that way. Just like she could have responded and asked if she could have done it later when she's not on vacation, she could have gotten the presentation and the vacation. This is the way that I want you to think as a leader. Ask yourself, how can I make this work for me and for them? Ask yourself, how can I serve people so well and honor my own boundaries? Ask yourself, how can I go after my dreams and create great impact without sacrificing my mental, emotional, or physical well-being in the process? It should never be the presentation or the vacation. It should never be financial or time freedom. If we believe that it can be both, then we start to formulate solutions for us to be able to create both. A great place to start is to take a look at your schedule right now. What is on your schedule that you could move to create more white space? Where is there an area that you could improve in doing something for yourself? Could you start your work day a little later so that you could move your body? These are little incremental changes that over time allow us to feel less resentful, that allow us to be proud of how we're showing up for ourselves and our businesses. So I'll leave you with this. Look at how you're spending your time and your energy right now. Look at the relationships that you're in and do an honest inventory of how are things going and how are things feeling. And then ask yourself, how do I want them to feel and how do I want them to look? Identify the gap between those two things and start to create solutions to get closer to where you want things to be. You're never stuck and you're never without power. Sometimes you just have to make hard choices that get your power back. 
Thank you guys for being here and for listening. I will see you guys next week.